All right, friends, welcome back. It's Ken, and I am so excited for this show. I've been looking forward to this day for as long as I can remember, since the first time I came up with the idea of doing this. In the studio today, I'm not gonna introduce them to you yet, I have the couple that we're gonna bless their lives and help them to find a home. And we're gonna introduce them to you right after this. My name's Ken Dunn. I'm a real estate investor, developer, and a national housing advocate. For decades now, thousands and thousands of Canadian families have been stuck in situations that they don't want. They wanna own homes, they want a place to call their own and raise their families. And they're struggling trying to put the money together for a down payment. They're struggling trying to keep their credit in good standing, paying for rent, being moved around and never feeling settled down. Real estate investors have been using strategies for decades where they buy houses with other people's money, they borrow the money to increase the value, and they sell the houses making incredible profits. I'm going to show these Canadian families how to use the same techniques to buy their dream homes. They're not going to need down payments, they're not going to need credit, because they're going to buy a house with sweat equity. Okay, I'm getting in the habit of doing this now and I'm gonna break this habit because I don't want this to seem routine to you. But before I introduce you to the winners, I have to give away some money. I'm giving away a thousand bucks right now. And as you guys remember, what I asked you to do to get in on this thousand dollar draw is to give us a comment in the chat, like in the comments below the video on who you think we should help. And it must've been tough. I gotta tell you guys, the having spent time with both the Allies and the Ferrens, I, I couldn't do this on my own. So I want to first off say thank you to everybody who's involved in this. I'm going to introduce the winners to you in a second. But before I do, um, there's, there's two things I'm going to tell you right now that I think this is really going to excite you and make you feel good about being one of our followers of the show and helping us to promote this show. Uh, but before I get into the feel good side of things, let's uh, we've got 523 people that we put in the draw. That's everybody who gave us feedback and shared this that was the two things you had to do and now we're going to get our, our director of everything i our director of looking good to um do the draw so justin go ahead and spin that wheel and tell me who won a thousand dollars sherry tompkins sherry tompkins sherry congratulations to you you just won a thousand dollars thank uh, thank you so much for helping us make this decision and yeah, we're going to get that thousand bucks out to you. Send us an email at support. We'll put the information in the chat and enjoy that thousand bucks. Now, before I introduce you to the winners, I know if you're anything like me, the hard part of this was just choosing, right? Because if you think about where we've come so far, 360 plus people applied to do this. My entire team dedicated a week to whittling this down to two people. We had both of those people on the show and both of their stories were unbelievably touching. So whittling it down to one, I mean, doesn't go into the chat and type yes, if you have a heart like I do. Um, it just, it, it felt like, I'll tell you where I was struggling and, and what I was really not liking about this entire process. It was driving me crazy a little bit is I wanted to do it for both of them. Like as, as I was listening to their stories and the reasons why I, I literally, couldn't help but think that I, I needed to do this for both of them, but we were only doing one on the show. So here's the big news. I'm going to do it for both of them. Now you're going to walk, you're going to follow the journey of one couple. You're going to follow their good days and their bad days. You're going to follow the stress and anxiety when they start realizing that they're actually buying a house with no money. I mean, you're going to see all of that, but I want you to know behind the scenes, that I'm gonna work with both couples. And on the very last show, on episode number 18, we're actually gonna have both couples on the show and get their feedback of what this process was like and how uh, this process has changed their lives. We're gonna take a really quick commercial break and then we're gonna come back and introduce you to our winners. Introducing the ultimate in hydrotherapy and premium relaxation. Experience the epitome of artisanship with Canadian hot tubs. Meticulously handcrafted for over four decades, Canadian hot tubs are synonymous with comfort, 
depth, and unwavering durability. You can choose from our range of four-foot cedar tubs or indulge in the therapeutic embrace of our five-foot hydrotherapy models. Available in Canada and across the world, Canadian hot tubs bring a touch of luxury to homes worldwide. Craftsmanship that speaks for itself. Visit canhottub.com now. All right, friends, welcome back. I am super excited. Uh, we've got a lot of mock clapping that's about to happen because I want to introduce you to my new friends, Marvin and Renee Farron. Hey guys, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Congratulations. Elated, elated. <laughs> how do you guys feel right now? Like we're gonna go get you guys a house for your family. It's still unreal. Unreal, it's man. Just unreal. Unreal. I'm telling you. Oh, I'm and overjoyed. We, we, we were here. We were here last week with the kids, and I know Emmanuel wasn't having any part of me. He, he didn't want me around him at all. The girls, they seemed so excited about this idea. Yes, yes, yes sir. Yes. Have they you, want that house. Yeah. Did you tell them? Like, have you told them about this? Yes. How did they react to they're, it? They're calm. They're calm. It's, it's like they didn't even understand it. Mm. Like, yeah. Oh, Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, we have a lot of work to do. It's going to it's literally going to take us 4 months to do all this, to find the house, to get it bought, to do the renovations and get you guys all set up. It's going to be a lot of work for all of us. I want to get right into it right now because when when you're trying to figure this out, like when you're getting started on this journey, a lot of people when when I teach them these strategies, the first thing they think of is that they want to buy a house and they want the perfect house and they start thinking about these amazing neighborhoods and everything. And unfortunately, the, the first thing we have to do is we have to really set our thinking properly mm -hmm. because yeah. you've got to be able to go out and find a property in a place where it's going to do good for you guys. So it, it, you want it to be a place where you want to live with your family, where the kids are going to be good and all that. But the other side of the coin is we have to go find a house that we can do this with, right? Yeah. Okay. So we have to be able to find a house that is dilapidated, that has got good bones, so it's structurally sound, mm -hmm. but it's got the ability for us to take it and renovate it and double the value of it. That's how this strategy works. So right now you guys live in Ajax, Ontario, is that right? Yes, Ajax. Okay, and tell me a little bit about like what your life is like now. How much of your life revolves around Ajax? Do you guys live and work in Ajax, or give me give me a little bit of a better understanding of your family environment? Where do you work? Where do you live? Where do the kids go to school? What do you do? Okay, okay well, I work in Whitby. <laughs> okay, I work in Ajax, so I have to travel from Ajax to Whitby. Um, How long a drive is that? Well, uh, pretty, pretty much around 20, 25 minutes drive okay. um, to get to my work location. I take the bus, so it's normally probably an hour. Okay. So that's that's my side. I'll let, I'll let <laughs> yes, my sir. husband talk about his side. <laughs> okay. His journey is a far <laughs> Okay, so um, I, work, I work in Mississauga. Yeah, it takes me about 45 minutes to reach work in the, in the mornings. And a hour and a half to come back. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> it's torture. It's torture, man. <laughs> but I but I understand you also have a bit of a modified work schedule. So you you work longer days and you work four hours, four yes, days a yeah, week. Yeah, they call it um ten in four. So you work ten hours in four days. Okay, got it. Yeah, so I get I get Fridays off. Okay, perfect. So a three three day weekend. <laughs> so if we ended up finding a house, but it was in a different neighborhood or a different area, uh, as an example, would could, could we adjust to that? Is that like if we find the right place and it really works out? What what? Let me ask you this question in a different way. What we need to understand is like how far we can look. Mm -hmm. So like if your bus drive turned into 30 minutes, would that be OK? If the kids had to change schools, would that be OK? Like what are some of the things that would be OK? And what are some of the things that would be harder? We're getting a house. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a house, kid. <laughs> so, so everything's okay. Everything is okay. <laughs> everything is okay. Whatever it is, we adjust. Yes. We'll adjust. All right. <laughs> that's okay. A, that's a very important asset, man. So <laughs> it really is. It's a game yeah. changer for you. Yes, it's, sir. So we we'll, we we'll, we'll adjust around it. I mean, like we're not hard and fast on anything um, just yet, as you know. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Some things in life we're gonna build now around that home. So that's very adjustable. Since you guys found out that you, this was actually happening and that it was you, is this is this becoming part of your conversation on a daily basis? Are you yeah, starting well, to look at houses? Are <laughs> you starting to think about it? I've, I've been having dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I yeah. think he started watching all. Oh, oh my gosh! All oh. your videos. <laughs> Whenever yeah, I get the time, thing. I'm on YouTube yeah. watching your videos, man. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do this. We're getting well, this. Well, you're. you're I want to keep. I want to. I want to stay ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are live on YouTube right now, so look at the cameras and wave at everybody because they're all congratulating you guys. Thank and, you for choosing us. And friends, go into the chat right now and tell us how much you love this amazing couple and congratulate them for that because it's gonna be unbelievable yes, all right sir. so the other part of this process is um when when we find the property we're going to raise all the money to buy it from private investors and then we're going to raise the money to do the renovations based on the value we know it's going to be worth afterwards but spending that money on renovations is it's as, as little as we can spend is super important and what that means is uh, we're going to want you guys to really dig in and help with this and do some of the demolition and ripping up the old carpets and, yes. you know, doing all the cleaning and things like that Sounds and fun. doing the painting and <laughs> sweat, anything we can do. That's right. The sweat <laughs> equity. That's exactly right. So what I'd love to know is, have you guys done any of that type of stuff before? Have you done any house renovations or painting or manual labor? You ever been involved in any of that stuff? Well, pa painting definitely, but yeah. demolition. No, we haven't, no. we haven't been down any houses. <laughs> okay. But it, sounds, it, really, it really sounds fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've changed a couple of sockets in the house. So that's, that's, that's something. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You didn't get electrocuted? You didn't get electrocuted, did you? <laughs> no. No, but, um, no demolition. That would be nice. But the cleaning is, I mean, like, that's not, that, that's, that's not like bombardly. Yeah. That's really yeah. Too, but, yeah. you know, that's no problem. Right? But, and, and I hope the most important part is you're willing to try it. Because yep. we're going to go out there and that's you guys were chosen because I believe you're going to really get your hands dirty. You're going to sweat. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. OK, so let's talk about the actual perfect house for you guys. If if you could like think about your family, you have three kids at home. Yes. You have another one in the oven. Yes. <laughs> it's four enough or are you going to do more than four? I'm good at four, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Renee, you're in charge of this. Is, is four yeah. enough? Okay, maybe you're not. <laughs> I'm going to be broke. <laughs> so when you think about raising four kids, and maybe, like, they're all little people right now, but when they get into their teenage years, like, ideally, what what how big a house do we need to have here? Do we want all the kids to have their own room? That would, that would be great. You know, if all of them could have their own room, but... Um... If it's not possible, we we are adjustable. Bunk beds. Because, yeah, bunk, bunk it, <laughs> we bunk it. We, you know, um, we grow children that, you know, hey, look out for each other. Be your best friend, you know. They, 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 are, they have been born close to each other. Okay. So they have developed that bond, which I know you will grow because, you know, I have siblings that I've grown with. We develop that bond and sometimes we're inseparable like twins. Okay. So it doesn't. If, if we don't get all of them in one room, then you know, bunk it's is fine. <laughs> yeah. You know, they have that inseparability, and that they love to share it with each other and stuff like that. So it, it's no problem. Perfect. Yeah. yeah perfect. What yeah. about bedrooms, bathrooms, toilets, a garage? Are any of these things important to you? I want you to dream a little <laughs> bit here. Yes. All of so, them is sounds good. Yeah. A lot of bathrooms. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. As you realize, some some mornings I'm gonna be real. Some mornings, you know, you don't want to use the bathroom. You have to interrupt somebody because they're there. <laughs> you know, when you wake up in the morning, it's like your body just like hurry up. And that's like, and then when you go and see the kids come and say, "Mommy, mommy, I want to use my it. turn." You know, oh yeah, you're too long. So it's it, it's a big deal. So in your house now, what? How are you set up? How big is the house? How many rooms are there? Who's sleeping together? How many bathrooms? Tell me about your current situation. So yeah. Just two rooms. yeah, two two um, two bedrooms, one bathroom, yeah. apartment. Yes, you live in a two bedroom, one, one bathroom apartment, apartment with yes. three kids. Yes, sir. <laughs> so three kids are in one room um, currently. Yeah. They share, uh, well, so, and we all use the one bathroom. Well, <laughs> we have to use the one bathroom. Yeah, it's chaos, so, man. Chaos. Yeah, so that's, that's what's happening now. So. You know, you have to do what you're doing fast. <laughs> or cut it fast, you know, because, you know, they're coming. 
And I guess the other thing we're going to have to think about when we put the budgets together is you're going to need some more furniture. Because if you got a little two bedroom house now and we go to, let's say, a four bedroom house with two bathrooms and a family room and a living room and a kitchen and a garage. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're going to have to visit some yard sales and <laughs> find some more furniture or something. Yeah, Definitely. Um, it's great. You know, we don't the, the, the kids, they like their space. Well, we try to create a, 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 a space for them to be able to play and do their, you know, in the apartments. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's not a lot of furniture that's there. Uh, no, that's not our home. <laughs> that apartment is not our home, man. <laughs> it's just a place you've been hanging out for yes. a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so last thing I want to talk about, then we're going to head off to a commercial break for a minute. But uh, this is a really important question. When I look at the area of uh, the city that you live in, mm -hmm. I see a, a major, major difference between the prices of houses in the actual city, like in areas that you are in now, mm -hmm. versus just 10 minutes outside of the city. Mm -hmm. I can see houses that are almost half the price and they come with bigger pieces of land, like a whole acre of land in the woods where you can have walking trails and all kinds of privacy. <laughs> yeah. So, well, this, well, this is what I'm wondering. Like, I, I really, and of course, I don't. I'm just getting to know you, so I don't know about your lives and stuff. But you could literally be in in the, this country setting that's five minutes from town. So your kids would only have a five minute bus ride to work. You'd, you'd probably be an extra 10 minutes on the bus for you to get to work. Your drive's not going to be any different because it's north and so you're going west to get to work. Yeah, west. So it's going to be the same thing for you regardless. Mm -hmm. But is that something you'd be open to when we start looking? Something that's like just a bit outside the city for a bigger property? I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you understand what I'm okay. saying. Tell me again. I'm a little slow. Tell me again. We're getting in a house, man. <laughs> I, I have no Find problem. us that house, get. Uh, I have no problem. I'm a country girl. I like, as I, I like the backyard. I like. I just like the the peace, the quiet. Not a city, really, type of person. So I like to be able to go out. Let's look at the trees to relax. So do something in my, you know, in that open space. If it's even to look <laughs> in the sky, to give thanks, something. Yeah. But I like the country. It's, it's <laughs> has a peaceful spirit, and sometimes I like. I I want that. It, it's good for your mental, <laughs> your mental space. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that, that's that's when you say country, <laughs> it's like here. I'm I'm like speak. Am I singing to you now? <laughs> speak, 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 and speak. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to go to a commercial. But before we do, friends, if you're watching the show right now and you're going to go on this journey with us, and what I mean by that is if you're going to follow the Farron family and do it yourself, I want you to sit down and have a conversation like we just had. If this is going to work for you, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. It's going to mean relocating into a different area for you. And it doesn't matter where you look in Canada. I've helped people all over this country to do this. You're going to find better value for your money if you start looking outside of your city centers, into the outlying areas, and even into the country around. That's where you're going to find your best opportunities. After the break, we're going to bring in our resident mortgage broker, Dan Char, and we're going to talk about the money right after a couple words from our sponsors. If you live in this amazing country and you dream about having a house for your family, a home you can call your own, but you haven't been able to do that because you have a hard time building up a down payment or the banks are telling you they can't help you because of credit, then pay attention. This ad is for you. My name is Ken Dunn and I'm a real estate investor and a national housing advocate. I have to tell you, there's a housing crisis going on right now, but the governments aren't going to fix it for you. All the governments are worried about is building more apartments, building more rental units. But until we figure out a way to help Canadians right across this country to buy homes with no money, then the crisis is never going to end. But don't worry, I've got the solution. I've been investing in real estate projects for more than 30 years, and I've never used any of my own money to buy the real estate. Here's what happens. I find a place that I want to buy. I look for places that are cheaper than the market. So they're the below value and I buy the, the properties with private money, 100%. 
and then I renovate the properties, increase the value. Then I go to the bank and say, hey, I own this house that's worth 800,000 and I only need a mortgage for 600,000 and they give me the mortgages. And you know what the dirty little secret the banks won't tell you is? If you have equity in the property, they're not gonna ask to see your credit. They're not gonna ask about your loans. They don't ask about any of that stuff. I wanna show you how to do this. I've helped hundreds of Canadian families just like you to buy homes without a down payment. And in this live workshop, I'm going to show you how to go out and find an undervalue house in your community that would make the right home for your family. And it's a fixer upper. Then I'm going to show you how to buy that property without using any money. You use private investors funds and I'll show you how to get them. Then I'm going to show you how to renovate the property using other people's money. And then once it's done, you're going to own a house that's got hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity in it. And you can easily get a bank loan and live happily ever after. It's called buying a house with sweat equity. And if you click on the link, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. All right, welcome back everybody. We've been joined on the show by my good buddy, the mortgage man, Dan Chire. Hey brother, how hey, are you? how you doing? Dan, this is uh, Marvin and uh, Rene. Pleasure meeting you. We're Same gonna be sir. helping them with going? a mortgage. Yes, what I'd like to do um, right now is just kind of talk through, and maybe give you the mic for a minute, Dan, and it's, it's for two reasons. Obviously, I wanna educate Rene and Marvin about the whole mortgage process, but Absolutely. we have thousands of people watching us here on YouTube, and I'd love to take the opportunity to educate all of them at the same time, because lots of the people following the show are gonna go out and do this themselves. Absolutely. So in this process, we're talking about going out and buying a place now, hopefully an off-market property, something that's really cheap, that needs lots of work, we're going to get your help to get a first mortgage from a private lender to get the property. Then we're going to get the second mortgage and close on it. And then we're going to increase the value. And then we're going to come back to you with this amazing couple and you're going to get them a traditional mortgage. Absolutely. Um, walk us through how that all happens. Why is it easier to do a private mortgage now? What's the difference? Ta let's let's just talk holistically. The, th the types of mortgages there are. Give us the low. Give us the lay. The Absolutely. Lowdown. So there there are three types of lenders. You have your A lenders, your B lenders, and C lenders. Okay. You all know your A lenders. That's your local bank, your local Royal Bank, bank CIBC, right. all those and, guys. And they have very tight criteria. They're gonna ask you for your your job letter, pay stuff, T fours all your income mm -hmm. and then they're also going to look at your credit rating as well and they're going to base it off of today's mortgage rates which is very high right now mm -hmm. on, on top of that there's something called the mortgage stress test so whatever your rate is they add a two percent increase that you have to qualify for and it the best way i can say it is if you're trying to buy a honda civic your income has to handle a payment of a Mercedes-Benz. Oh, and this okay. is why we're having trouble with getting financing right now. So what Ken is proposing is we buy a property using the third tier lender, private money, C lenders. And the difference is private lenders don't look at your income and credit. They're looking at the property itself and also your exit strategy on how you're going to repay the loan. And that's through his whole process. So. What we have to look at is the exit. We work backwards, okay? So your, your first step is you're going to locate a property that, is, that needs a lot of work, okay? Yeah. And my job is to get you the first mortgage to get into that property. You still need to raise the down payment, which Ken will help you do. Mm -hmm. And then the secret magic part is the renovation. That's <laughs> where you make your money. So you're going to raise more money behind, mm -hmm. work with Ken and his team, and and actually renovate the property to today's standards. And that's where you're gonna create something called lift. And that's where you build equity. Now, once that is complete, you're gonna have equity in the, in the property. And that's when we do a takeout mortgage or a refinance. Mm -hmm. And that's when I'm gonna bring you back to a traditional bank, okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, why can't you do this with a regular bank right away? Well, because banks want properties that are ready to move into, like they want good property. So you have to do the hard work right now to bring it to that state 
where the bank is willing to take that condition of the property. So they want to see today's 2023 yes. condition, right? They don't want to see it or <laughs> how you're buying it. <laughs> so <laughs> so we're, we're taking it from here to here and that and then we wrap everything up in one in one shot. So how we have to do this is we have to start with the end in mind and we work backwards. Okay, so you have to look for the property that mm -hmm. can actually create lift, mm -hmm. buy it at the right price, and then raise enough capital and do the right renovations to create that lift. And that's where Ken comes in. Now, what we wanna do is we're gonna sit down and we're gonna go through a little exercise on this chalkboard where I'm gonna show you guys, we're basically gonna figure out what you can afford. Mm -hmm. And we have to reverse engineer this. And friends, if you're watching this show from home and you're gonna go through this process, you need to grab a pen and paper and do this same exercise. And I'm gonna go through it in detail and we're gonna hone right in on the chalkboard so you can see what's going on. Um, so we can all do this together. Now off air, we had a little bit of a conversation before and we know that we could really, with the with the property taxes and some of the other expenses you're going to incur because you own a home, you guys can pretty well afford to get a mortgage, a, an overall situation that would cost you $4,500. So that means your mortgage, your property taxes, all the other expenses you have. So this is the number that we have to work with when we organize this. And essentially, here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to move the binoculars off my eyes so I can figure this out. I'm going to take this chalkboard. We're going to clean this up. We're going to go through an exercise. Okay. So I, the first place I looked at when I was looking at the area, I'm going to call this the catchment area, the area that we're looking for for a house. Mm -hmm. I saw a property that was worth, that was being sold for $500,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I looked at that property online, I could tell from looking at it that it needs a new roof, it needs new windows, it needs new floors, it's gonna need a new kitchen, two new bathrooms. But listen to this, it's four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a garage on an acre of property just five minutes outside of the city. Well, <laughs> have, have I already sold you, Renee? <laughs> That's nice. So, but here's what I'm the most excited about. To do all those renovations, it's going to be about $150,000. So when we're finished, when we do the refinance with Dan, we're gonna have to get a mortgage of $650,000 because what we're gonna do, if we were to buy this place, we would get a first mortgage from Dan mm -hmm. for 300,000 and then we'll get a second mortgage through my investor friends for 200,000. And then we're gonna borrow that other money, which is $150,000. Now, when we're all finished, we're gonna go back to Dan mm -hmm. and we're gonna say, okay, we have all this done now, mm -hmm. but this is the part I'm the most excited about. We're gonna buy it for 500, put 150,000 into it. Mm -hmm. But when we're finished, it's gonna be worth a million dollars. Whoa. <laughs> it means you guys are gonna own a million dollar house. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. <laughs> how, does, how does that feel? That's what I'm talking about. Now, a mortgage of $650,000, trying to make that fit into $4,900 a month in a traditional mortgage is hard. It might, that might not work. So what we have to do realistically is figure out, you know, what's the area we want to be looking in. And so we're going to just do, go through this exercise right now. And what I want to start off by doing is looking at a scenario where, let's say we find a property that we can buy for $400,000. Mm -hmm. Now looking in those areas, we can probably do that. We can probably find a place that, that's in that range. Mm -hmm. But the, the hard part's going to be, we want to end up with a mortgage of around $500,000. So that means it will only work if we can keep all of our budget for the renovations and everything under $100,000. And there are ways that we can do that. We can do that by doing some of our own demolition. We can do that by, you know, ripping out all the old stuff. And we can even do all the painting ourselves. And I can even show you guys how to put the hardwood floors in yourself. And okay. All kinds of neat things like that to keep the price low. And so, but I think this is kind of the number that we should be looking at mm -hmm. because that number, $500,000, we know that you could actually afford that and that mortgage will end up being about 3,500 a month. Now, what I mean by that is when you go back to Dan at the end of this, if you need a mortgage of $500,000, mm -hmm. the first thing is 
by putting the hundred thousand dollars of renovations into it mm -hmm. we're going to take that house that's worth 400 that we buy it for mm -hmm. and we're going to turn it into eight hundred thousand dollars that it's worth mm -hmm. and what's really neat about this is the way we're going to do that when we start seeing properties we're going to work with a real estate agent that i'm going to introduce you to she's a fantastic person and she's yeah. going to do a couple things for us she's going to help us to find the property that has enough renovations in it that we can increase the value mm -hmm. but the other thing that she's going to do is she's going to tell us how much it's going to be worth when it's done and the way she does that is she she has access to all the places that have been bought by people and any real estate agent in Canada can do this for you. This is why if you're doing this process, you need to work with a good real estate agent. And they call that comparables. So what she's gonna do is she's gonna go out and she's gonna look for, so let's say we find a house that's three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a garage on half an acre of land. She's gonna go out and say, okay, what other houses have sold around here that are in perfect condition that are like new quality mm -hmm. and what are they worth and she'll find the prices and hopefully what we'll find in this situation is she'll see one that sold for 790 she'll see another one that sold for 950 and another one that sold for 800. so if, if those were the numbers she's going to take the average of those which would be about eight hundred and forty thousand dollars, and she'll say when the renovations are finished, the place will be worth 840000 Now, what's interesting about this, you know this already, Dan, is what I just described to you and everybody that's watching the show, this is how appraisers work. If you ever get an appraisal done on a property and you look at it, they're going to list all the things that the property has in, in a mass amount of detail. But when they figure out, when they do the actual appraisal to figure out what it's worth, you know what they do? They go find comparables in the area. They, they add up the total, they divide it by that number, and that's the number they assign. That's how appraisals work the same way. So the agent is going to do that for us. So when we buy the property, mm -hmm. we already know what it's going to be worth when we're finished. And that's the way this works. The most important reason for this, mm -hmm. to make sure that we have that lift and we know what that value is going to be when we finish, is when we're finished, we have to make sure that Dan has the ammunition to get us a good mortgage to finish this off. And the most important thing for Dan, if you guys went now to the bank mm -hmm. and you said, I want to buy a house for $850,000 and you found one and you only had $20,000 to put into it. And that, so that, that would be like an $830,000 mortgage. Mm -hmm. Your monthly payments, if they would do it for you, would be about $8,000 mm -hmm. to cover that. You can never afford that, right? <laughs> but by using the sweat equity plan, it allows you to get the place and you're going to have a bunch of equity. So your mortgage is going to be 500,000. The property is going to be worth 840,000. Well, that middle part, 260 grand, that's your money. And that's what makes the deal happen. Dan, explain what this actually means to a bank and what exactly, what's the technical way of describing what I just it, described? Absolutely, you're, you're, you're doing something called a refinance. So so you're, you're taking the new value minus the debt that we are asking the bank for. And so the, the new value minus the debt equals equity. And that's money that you own. You can't touch it, you can't feel it, but it's there. It's there. <laughs> yeah, it's real money. <laughs> okay. Yep, it's absolutely real money. So I think based on what we were talking about before, when we start looking at houses, we need to find a house that is somewhere between $350,000 and $450,000 for this to work inside of your budget. Mm -hmm. And that's really gonna dictate where we look and what we look for. Because if we go right into Ajax where you guys live now, looking for a house for 350 grand, you're gonna be living in a shoebox. <laughs> but if we go 15 minutes north, it's gonna mean a 30 minute bus ride for you. He's gonna get lucky. It's gonna be the same drive for him. <laughs> We're gonna to have to uproot our lives now, but it's gonna end up giving you a situation that you're gonna be way ahead in the curve. You're gonna have $260,000 in cash and savings and you'll have a house that you can be proud of. Yes, sir. <laughs> Are we in agreement? Does that price seem like the right? We're gonna go start looking for a house and we're gonna tell our agent that we want a place to 350 to 450. Does that make sense to you guys to get started? Yes, yes. And are you good with that, Dan, if we come back to you in three months from now and say, 
We have a house that's worth 850000 and we need a mortgage for 500000 Absolutely. Can that Absolutely. work for you? I, and I'll work with you guys on what the banks are going to need mm -hmm. in terms of your income and your credit. So I'll work with you off, off camera and what we need to see okay. and we'll get you there. Well, for everybody yeah. that's watching the YouTube show, let's talk about yeah. that for a second. So when we go to get that final mortgage for, for anybody that does mm -hmm. this, there's this thing called TDSR, Correct. total debt service ratio. Correct. And there's things that people can do now. If they know they're gonna be looking for a mortgage in four months from now, Yes. what is a TDSR? What's involved in it? How is it calculated? And what are some of the things people can do now to make sure they put themselves into the best situation? Right, so TDSR stands for total debt service ratio, and mm -hmm. it's a calculation mm -hmm. that banks and financial institutions use to calculate your, your liability and your for affordability to ca to carry this mortgage. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they calculate the monthly payment of the mortgage mm -hmm. plus your utilities plus the taxes and all other debts. That includes your car loan, your credit cards, line yeah. of credit, any OSAP. They calculate all of that and right now they don't want your total debt load to be more than 48% of your monthly income. So if you're spending more than 48%, then they're not gonna say yes to the deal. So we, ha we have to work together to bring up your income, reduce your debt load, mm -hmm. so that you will fit into their guidelines. <laughs> so uh, friends, what, what Dan is gonna do with the Ferrans off camera privately is he's gonna take a look at the details of credit cards and other debts and see if there's anything that he can do and advise them to do now so that they can start really reducing what they spend every month because this is a very important time to start planning this. If you're gonna go through this process, in four months from now, the Farrens are gonna be looking for a first mortgage. And it's gonna be really important to show the bank that they have a lot of capital free, like a lot of their monthly income is free. So that means reducing debt however they can to create the best picture for presentation to everybody. And that's the show. I'm really excited. Are you guys ready to go look for a house? It's yeah. time to start looking. Yay. In the next episode, we're actually going to be on scene with our real estate agent. We're going to go out and start looking at houses. I want to bring you guys on that journey with us so you can help us to help the Ferrans to find the right property. Now, here's the special deal for you today. I'm gonna to give away cash at the beginning of next week's show. So here's what I want you guys to do. Go into the chat right now and tell me, are you guys interested in some free money? <laughs> tell me what you've got in the chat. <laughs> Look at the chat, it's blowing up right now, it's crazy. All right, here's what I wanna do. At the beginning of the next show, I'm gonna give away $1,000 cash. And here's how you're gonna get in the draw. I want you to go into the comments and I want you to tell me exactly what you got out of today's show. I want you to give me your biggest single takeaway and write it in the comments. And, and the second thing I want you to do is I want you to share this episode onto one of your other social media channels. So you do those two things, we're gonna put you in the draw. At the beginning of next week's show, I'm gonna start off by doing a draw and giving away $1,000 cash. Who wants the money? We'll see you next week.